everybody. This is the day that the Lord has made and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. We've come to give God praise. We've come to celebrate God together. And we invite those of you that's joining us now on Facebook Live. Amen. We thank you for tuning in. We invite you to invite somebody else to worship with us. Hit share, hit like, tell them truth. Tabernacle Ministries is on the air with Bishop Haywood Parker and Co-Pastor Wanda uh, Parker. I am Bishop Haywood Parker, and it's a beautiful day to give God praise. It's a beautiful day to exalt the name of God. And so those of you that are joining us on this morning, I want you to worship with us as we experience God together. For God is so good. Can you take a moment wherever you are and worship? Those of you that's joining us on the parking lots, amen, if I can get you to focus in with me now, hallelujah, as we give God together. If you're able to stand, you're able to uh, sit in your car or get out of your car or whatever, amen, let's lift those hands together as we give God praise, as we give God glory, for we come to worship him, we come to adore him, we come to love him. Praise team is moving in place for me at this time. As we come to love God, we come to celebrate God. We come to uplift the name of God. For God, you're awesome and God, you're mighty. For God, you're awesome and God, you're mighty. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody help me give the Lord praise. Help me give the Lord worship. Help me give the Lord glory. Amen. As we come together on this beautiful Sunday morning that the Lord has made. This beautiful Sunday morning that the Lord has given us. Amen. This beautiful Sunday morning that God has given us another opportunity to worship. Amen. I want you to join us in worship right now. Hallelujah. Come on. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, come on. I want somebody to lift your hands. I want somebody to lift your hands. Lift your hands. Lift your hands right where you are. Hallelujah. Come on. Lift your hands right where you are. To worship God together. Where's my praise team? Hallelujah. We're going to worship God. We're going to lift God up the name of God. For the Lord is worthy. And the Lord is worthy of exaltation. The Lord is worthy now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. 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 Now, as we beseech the Lord together, my mind. As we give God praise together now, hallelujah. Father, we bless your name. We love your name. We love you. We love you now. It's a beautiful Sunday morning. Come on, somebody now. We love you. We love you. We love you. And we come to exalt your name, God. We come to bless your holy name, Lord. We come to exalt your name now. Come on, those of you that may be in your kitchen, you may be in your bedroom. You may be in your living room. I don't know where you are. You may be sitting in your car. Hallelujah. Let's lift those hands and give God praise now. Let's create an authentic moment of worship. Regardless as to where you are, let's create a moment of worship. Let's create a moment to give Him glory now. Let's create a moment to lift up the name of the Lord now. Father, we love you, we love we love we love you, we love, we love. Oh, ba, 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 ba. Somebody help me love him now, now. Somebody help me give the Lord praise now. Somebody help me give the Lord glory now. Father, we love you, we love you. We love you, we love you. And we love you, and we love you. We, love you. we invite you to pray with us now. Hallelujah right where you are create an altar right where you are stop in your tracks and come on let's give god praise together as we seek the lord in prayer father we thank you for this morning we thank you for another day that you've given us we thank you for another opportunity to approach the throne of grace and the good news is you told us that we can come boldly to the throne of grace to find help in the time of need for you are God who gives grace. You are God who gives mercy. You are God who disperse help to your people. And we thank you right now. And God, we dare not ask you anything until we give you proper praise, until we adore your name, until we celebrate your name, until we celebrate your goodness, we celebrate your power, we celebrate your ability, we celebrate who you are, God. And we lift your name on high. And we tell you, thank you, thank you, thank you, Lord. 
for being such an awesome and a mighty God. Thank you for being such a righteous and a good God. Thank you, God, for being a God of mercy, the God of grace. We thank you for being the God of forgiveness. And we thank you for being the God who holds all things together. Father, amidst all the turmoil that we've been in, amidst all the crisis that the world is in, we thank you that you are the God that holds things together. And we say like the old church said, we thank you for keeping us in our right minds. We thank you now for God in our hearts. We thank you now for watching over us while we slept. And we thank you for waking us up this morning and giving us health, life, and strength. And we give your name praise and we give your name thanks. Come on, somebody tell God thank you. Father, we thank you. We oh, come on, come on, come on. And we thank you right now. We thank you. And now, God, we ask in the name of Jesus that you will stretch forth your hands all over the universe. Stretch forth your hands all over the world. Stretch forth your hand all over America. Stretch, stretch forth your hands all over North Carolina. And stop at Rocky Mountain. And stop at True Tabernacle Ministries. And God, while you're stretching forth your hand, we know you are God of, a, of a, being a, a great healer. We know you are God of deliverance. We know you are God of a breakthrough. We know you are a way maker and a provider. So stretch forth your hands now and do only what God can do now. Touch people everywhere. Touch the sick and the shut-in. Touch those that are lonely and depressed. Touch those that are confused, God, in the name of Jesus. And when you get through, you can lift your people in another place. And Father, we give your name praise. We thank you for the lifting of our hands. We thank you for victory right now, God. We thank you for overcoming power in the name of Jesus. And now, God, we ask that you would visit us in our worship today. Touch the preacher. Touch the worship leaders. Touch the dancers. Touch the musicians. That, God, this will be about giving your name praise. And we thank you right now. And we thank you right now. Come on, somebody. And we say we thank you right now. We thank you right now. In Jesus' name, we pray and we praise. And we celebrate an awesome and a mighty God. We celebrate a power and a righteous God. We celebrate a deliverer. We celebrate a keeper. We celebrate a provider. We celebrate a healer. We celebrate you now. In Jesus' name. God, people say amen. Amen. Somebody shout hallelujah. Right in your kitchen, shout hallelujah. Right in your living room, shout hallelujah. Right where you are, shout hallelujah. Those in your car, shout hallelujah. As we give God praise, join us for worship. Now as the worship leader come and give us worship this morning. We bless your name, Jesus. We magnify your name, Jesus. There is nobody like you. There is nobody like you, Jesus. We magnify you. We glorify you. Come on, right here in the parking lot. We magnify you, Jesus. We glorify your name. Come on, hug your horns. Hallelujah. Hug your horns. Hallelujah. We praise you, Jesus. We glorify your name. We permeate this atmosphere with your glory. Hallelujah. Saturate this atmosphere with your glory. In the name of Jesus, let miracles take place right here in the parking lot. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We praise your name, Jesus. Hey. Mission. We love you, Jesus. Glory. Good morning, True Tabernacle. I see you out here on the parking lot. Hallelujah. Thank you for worshiping with us by streaming on Facebook Live. Come on and click like, click share, and let somebody know True Tabernacle Ministries is on this morning. Don't stop your worship. Hallelujah. Let your glory rise, Jesus. Let the glory of the Lord rise. 
So we run into you, God, because we're safe. Yes, Lord. Can I just see you lift your hands all over this sanctuary? Because that's what this is right now. It's the sanctuary. Hallelujah. We magnify you, Jesus. We glorify you, Jesus. Marvelous are you. Marvelous are your works. And we praise your holy name. So we say praise him. Praise him. Praise him. Praise him. Because he's Jesus. Blessed Savior, he's worthy to be praised. Come on, can you say it? Praise him. Praise him. Thank you, Jesus.
voices out here. Lift your voices and give God praise. Right where you are while you're streaming. Travis is coming, but lift your voice and give praise. Make habitation right where you are. In your living rooms, in your bedrooms, in your kitchens, right here on the parking lot. Make habitation for the Lord. Elder Travis is coming right now. Put those hands together and give God praise. Come on, do what the song says and praise Him. Hallelujah. We give Him praise and we give Him honor. That's a good place to worship Him. I don't want to move too quickly because somebody might need that right here in this moment. Come on, lift those hands right where you are and bless His name. Bless His name. Bless His name. Hallelujah. Bless your name, Jesus. Bless your name, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. That's it. I hear you in the parking lot. I hear the sound of worship. Hallelujah, hallelujah. God, you're worthy, you're worthy, you're worthy, you're worthy. It's a good day to be alive, isn't it? I said it's a good day to be alive, isn't it? Come on, let me hear you, saints. I said it's a good day to be alive. God has given us yet another beautiful day. And we woke up this morning. That's a good reason to put those hands together and give God a praise. Come on, let me hear you give God praise right here. Hallelujah. He's worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy of the praise. Hallelujah. We bless the wonderful name of Jesus. Bless that wonderful name of Jesus. There's no other name I know. There's power in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. And we give his name praise on this morning. Certainly we say hello and we greet those that are watching us streaming live on Facebook. Amen. Thank you for joining us again. We're out here in the parking lot. The sun is shining on this beautiful day. But we thank you for wherever you are. We thank you for liking and loving and sharing this video of True Tabernacle Ministries this morning. Truth, I see you. Those are sitting in your car. Let me hear you honk those horns. Let me see you this morning. I hear you. God bless you all this morning. Amen. It's a beautiful day to be outside having church. Amen. I said it's a beautiful day to be outside having church. And I don't know about you this morning, but I woke up with a praise in my spirit. Oh, y'all ain't ready. Y'all don't know how to praise him in the parking lot. I said, I woke up this morning with a praise down in my soul because I have a reason to praise him this morning. Amen. I'm not going to be before you long, but certainly, truth, can we honor and celebrate our leaders, our bishop co and co-pastor on this morning? Come on. We celebrate our awesome leaders on today. Amen. God bless you this morning. We're going to go right to the word. Amen. How many need a word from the Lord? Amen. In times like these, we got to have a word from the Lord. Amen. And we're going to go to the book of Philippians chapter 4. This is a familiar scripture to us. Philippians chapter 4, verses 6 and verse 7. Amen. And it says, be anxious for nothing. But in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And this is the part I like. It says, and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. This is the word of the Lord. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for this time this moment in time which you've given us to share your word. I pray now that you would hide me behind your cross. God, let me decrease and you increase and you get the glory. God, give your people listening ears and open hearts on today to receive the word that you've given me to give to your people on today. Let it change somebody's life. In Jesus' name, we pray and we believe. Come on, say amen. Amen. 
Amen. It seemed like the sun just got a little brighter. Amen. Y'all pray for this bald-headed brother up here, okay? Amen. I think it's safe to say, and before I go there, uh, if I could use for a subject, um, and I'm not trying to be political today, um, so just hear me out, if you will. But uh, my subject today is take a knee. Just tell somebody around you, take a knee. Take a knee. I'm going to make it make sense. Um, I think it is safe for us to say and make the conclusion that COVID-19 and the coronavirus um, has taken the world by storm. Can we agree? It has taken the world by storm and it has pretty much changed the way of what we know as normalcy. And from what I can tell, things will never be the same again. But I'm going to make a statement this morning, and I pray that you don't get mad when I say it. I pray that Bishop don't sit me down and say I can't preach again, because this may sound a little crazy when I say this statement. But I want to say this morning, I thank God for COVID-19. <laughs> I know that seems strange. I know that sounds a little crazy, but I thank God for COVID-19. Well, Travis, what are you saying? Well, it's because of this virus that we've been in isolation. We've had to self-quarantine and stay at home, and we've had to stop doing things the way we once did and do life a new way. Somebody say a new way. We've had to go back, really, to some of the basics, things that we used to do, such as washing your hands on a regular basis. Now, I know that sounds crazy, but y'all know some people don't wash their hands. But we got to go back to washing our hands regularly. And not only are we washing our hands regularly, but we've had to adjust to things being different. The restaurants have closed down, so... We've had to learn how to appreciate a home-cooked meal. Lord have mercy. I know some of y'all ain't used your stove in years. You forgot how it works. You didn't even know that knob was up there and it turns to the right and not to the left because you ain't cooked in years. But we've had to learn how to appreciate cooking a home-cooked meal. And not only that, we've been forced to spend quality time with our families. That's a good thing. Somebody say, that's a good thing. We've had to spend quality time at home and learn how to do things around the house that we haven't had a chance to do in a very long time. We've even had to learn the importance of saving money and putting money away because the truth of the matter is some of us are not even working right now. Perhaps your job is furloughed, but perhaps you are one that's having to collect unemployment because you're not working. So you've had to adjust to pinching pennies and pitching dollars the best way that you can. This is a new normal I'm talking about. And some still have not reopened to let you go back to work. Teachers have had to come up with extensive lesson plans, and I know they're celebrating now because summertime is here. School is out right now. Praise the Lord, teachers. But they've had to learn how to put together extensive uh lesson plans and learn how to teach virtually and not only that but parents have had to now learn how to homeschool teach your kids at home and go over their homework with them and make sure assignments are turned in on time because after all this is the new normal but how many of you know that some of this stuff was necessary the bible says to be anxious for nothing now, I know that when we start talking about a pandemic in the world, the word pandemic may trigger some type of anxiety. The word pandemic may cause you to be a little nervous. The word pandemic may cause you to be scared because we truthfully, we really don't know who has it and who does it. But it can cause anxiety to rear its ugly head. But not only that, but there's something that about anxiety that will cause you to start to lose your mind. After all, anxiety at this time for some is at an all-time high. Stress and panic attacks. And not only panic attacks, but depression is starting to set in for some. 
And as a result, when you come under a place where you're in a lot of anxiety and you're dealing with stress and depression, then this can lead to addiction. Some start using drugs and alcohol and sex and other things to cope for what's missing in their life to deal with anxiety. I'm going somewhere. People are losing their minds. I'm hearing now of people committing suicide and wanting to commit suicide because anxiety has distracted them from God's reality. I'll say that again so you can get it. People are losing their minds because anxiety has distracted them from God's reality. Well, Travis, what are you saying? God's reality. I said it like that because we have to, to learn to distinguish between the facts and what's reality. We have to learn to distinguish between reality and what God says about us. So, yes, we are in a pandemic. And, yes, unemployment is rising like never before. But, however, there is the facts that God gives us. God says that we shall be the lender and not the borrower. God says that we shall be the head and not the tail. God says we shall be above and not beneath. It doesn't change the fact that our God shall supply all of our need according to his riches and glory. It doesn't change the fact that God is still Jehovah Jireh. He's the one that's always going to provide for us. It doesn't change the fact that the scripture says many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord shall deliver us from them all. It doesn't change the fact that God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power, of love, and a sound mind. Somebody shout, these are the facts. I said, these are the facts that God has given us. So the word anxious, the word anxious, it means extreme uneasiness of the mind or serious fear about something. Now, it sounds like to me when Paul was writing the book of Philippians, he had some kind of understanding of anxiety. But not only did he have an understanding of anxiety, he also had a deeper revelation of who God is. Because after all, when he wrote the book of Philippians, where was he? He was in prison. So that says to me, he had an understanding even in prison to say, be anxious for nothing. He had an understanding of who God was. So while he was in prison, he wrote this book and he came to know God in a new kind of way to be sitting there in the prison cell writing the book of Philippians and writing to the church. Paul was telling the church to be steadfast in their faith. He was showing the church the humility of Christ to, to empty himself and become obedient unto death, even death on the cross. That's in chapter 2 of Philippians. He's talking about an even goes to say the church to work out their own soul salvation with fear and trembling. He's in jail writing all of this trying to encourage the church. And then when he gets to chapter 4, and Paul has the nerve to tell us, be anxious for nothing. <laughs> but here's the next part. It says, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, it says, let your requests be known to God. So the key word here for me is prayer. Somebody shout prayer. Somebody shout it again, say prayer. So Paul is saying we have to now turn our worries into prayer. And I came to help us today, people of God, can we deal, the only way we can deal with the darkness in the world is, is unless we go down before God in prayer. If you notice in the Bible, Jesus always went away somewhere to pray. I'll say it again. Jesus always found a place away from everybody else to go find a place of prayer. And it's a scripture in the Bible, and I'm going to just paraphrase it. I'm not going to go there, but you remember the story when the man brought his son to the disciples. And he asked them, he said, get this, this I'm paraphrasing, he said, get this demon out of my son. That's what he said. Get this demon out of my son. But he took him to the disciples. Remember, Jesus was up there praying somewhere. And the disciples, they tarry. Y'all know how y'all used to tarry. We don't do that anymore. But they tarry to get that demon out of that boy. Couldn't do a thing. 
They tarry all day and all night. They tarry. Come out, spirit. Come out, devil. Come out, demon. Spit them out. Come out. Y'all know how y'all used to do. Amen. They tarry with that demon. He didn't come out. Jesus came down out of his place of prayer, spoke to the man's son, and immediately he was made whole. He sent the man on his way. Travis, what are you trying to say? We can't deal with the rulers of darkness until we have been in a place of prayer. I'll say it again. Jesus is our example today. He had been in a place of prayer. And all he had to do was step down and speak to that thing. And it was cast out immediately. Somebody shout immediately. The only way we can deal with the darkness of this world today is if we spend some time in prayer. Somebody say we got to pray. Church, we have to come to a realization and we have to understand that we have a power that others don't have. I said we have a power that nobody else has. We have a power that's greater than any government system. Hello, somebody. We even have a greater power than that orange man that's sitting up there in the White House. We got greater power than he does. And it's a power that comes when we go before God in prayer. We have a power because the Bible says that the government is sitting upon his shoulders. So we're greater than any government system. We're greater than any social system. We're greater than any economic system. We're greater than even the education system because we have a power that's only given from God through prayer. And because we have this power, the world needs what we have. The Bible says, if my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray, seek my face, and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will heal their land. Saints, we got to get back to a place of prayer. And Paul was helping us out, and he gave us an answer to help us deal with our anxiety. And the answer to that anxiety is prayer. Prayer is the key that unlocks the door. But not only will it unlock the door, prayer is the answer to every anxiety issue. I came to tell you today that any mental health illness, any anxiety, any disorder that you're dealing with, I guarantee you, if you go before God in prayer, he'll work it out. I don't claim to be a doctor. I'm not a therapist, so don't, don't hold that against me. Because I do believe that there is a such thing as seeking therapy and seeking counseling. But after you do all that, you got to take a knee. I'll say it again. You got to take a knee and go before God in prayer. Now, in the midst of a pandemic that's already happening and started earlier this year, and we've seen the numbers increase. Not only are we dealing with that, but now we're dealing with social injustice in our world. Dealing with police brutality. Dealing with racism. Mixing all of this on top of a pandemic. Somebody say, that's a need. There might be some anxiety after all if we got to deal with that. But I've learned that if we go before God in prayer, somebody say pray. I'm going to keep saying it until you get it. Somebody say pray. We have to get to a place of prayer if we're going to deal with the darkness that we're dealing with in this world today. Even on yesterday, there was a shooting in Atlanta, Georgia of another black man unarmed at Wendy's parking lot. He was shot and killed right there. Rayshard Brooks, that's his name. I'm calling his name today. They're going crazy right now in Atlanta, Georgia, as a result of another case of police brutality in Atlanta, Georgia. Somebody said, we got to pray. We watched as the world has responded to what's going on right here in the United States of America. We're supposed to be the land of the free and the home of the brave. But yet we're dealing with the issues we're dealing with. Racism still exists, somebody. Social injustice still exists. Police brutality still exists in the land of the free. And the world has watched as we handle and deal with these situations. And I said to myself the other day as I watched 
the demonstration in Paris, France, somebody in Paris, France, across the world. Thousands and thousands of people gathered to march and protest. I watched it as they did it in Germany. I watched it as they did it in Australia. I watched it as they even had a protest in Africa. I watched it as they did it right here in Philadelphia. Thousands of people filled the streets. I watched it a few Sundays ago right here in Rocky Mount. I watched it on the TV right there in my city of Raleigh, North Carolina. And I watched how the people gathered together to protest. But not once did I hear the people saying a word of prayer. Y'all didn't hear me. I said they gathered together. Thousands of people for a cause. But I not once heard the people lift up a word of prayer. Can you imagine if we gathered together like that? The amount of good that would come out of a place of prayer. If thousands of people would gather together in Jesus' name. Y'all didn't hear me. I said if thousands of people would gather together in Jesus' name. And begin to call on the name of the Lord. And begin to call down and cast down those principalities that do exist. The amount and the, the difference that it will make in the world today. So I came to just remind us. As I said at the beginning, it's time to get back to the basics of life. I said at the beginning, I thank God for COVID-19 because not only has it reminded me of what I needed to do, but most importantly, it reminded me I have to go back and find a place of prayer. And I'm not talking about at the, altar, I mean, at, at the side of my bed before I go to sleep. I'm not talking about when I pray over my food every day. But since we're in isolation... Since we can't go anywhere anyhow, you might as well find you a good posture right at the house and find you a posture of prayer. And so on today, in the midst of the pandemic and in the midst of police brutality, in the midst of racism, in the midst of social injustices, I've decided I'm going to be the first. If I can do it, somebody else can do it too. We're going to take a knee today. I know you're in the parking lot. But think of these names, Trayvon Martin, Tamir Rice, Eric Garner, Emmett Till, Alton Sterling, Michael Brown, Sandra Bland, Philando Castillo, some of the more recent ones, Breonna Taylor, George Floyd, and just on yesterday, Richard Brooks. Today, I'm deciding that what I want to do is take a knee. Today, I want to take a stand and take a knee at the same time. After I've taken a knee for Black Lives Matter, after I've taken a knee for social injustices in the world, after I've taken a knee against racism and segregation that still exists in this world. After I've joined with my brother uh, Kaepernick in the NFL, he took a knee long time ago. He tried to get us to realize it then, but now we see what he was talking about. After I take a knee for what we've done in this world, then I got to get down on my other knee. And while I'm on that one knee, I get down on my second knee. And then I find a posture of prayer. Because it's going to take more than just getting down on one knee. But we got to get down on both knees now. It's time for us to stop playing the games. We can march. We can protest. That's good. But while we're doing that, somebody needs to be praying. We need intercessors in the world today. We need people that said, I'm not scared to call on the name of Jesus. I'm not afraid to do what I got to do and bring prayer back into the world. We need people that understand that prayer is going to bring us out of this thing. And when we have come back to a place of prayer, we will be able to dispel darkness in the world. Our light will begin to shine because darkness can't exist at the same time that light can. How many know that? But when we get down on not just one knee, but when we get down on both knees and find a posture of prayer, we will begin to see these principalities break up in the atmosphere. We will begin to see the wheel of the darkness come down. They got to fall when we pray. I said they got to fall when we pray. 
I said they got to fall when we pray. My God. So I'm asking you on today, if you're watching us on Facebook, right where you are, if you're in your house, if you're in your living room, find you a place to just kneel down. Don't take just one knee, but take both knees on today. Because we got to do more than just take a knee. We got to find a place of prayer. I'm challenging every one of us on this parking lot today to begin right where you are. I know you're in the parking lot, so I'm not going to ask you to get on a knee unless you want to. But can you get up from where you are just for a minute? Can we get up and walk around unless you want to kneel on your knees? But can we have a moment of prayer out here in the parking lot? Come on, saints, it's time to pray because we got to change this atmosphere. We got to change our world. We got to change our society. And it's going to take all of us, not just a selected few, but it's going to take all of us to go back to a place of prayer. So let's pray right here. Father, in the name of Jesus, God, we're calling on your name right now because your name has power. Your name has healing. Your name has deliverance. Demons tremble at your name. So we're calling on your name, Jesus. Come on, somebody shout, Jesus. Come on, somebody shout, Jesus. There's power in your name, oh God. And we're calling on you right now, oh God, because we need you today. Our earth needs you. The earth needs you now, God. In the name of Jesus, the world is crying out for help. The world is crying out for an answer. And we have the answer today. You are the answer for the world today. And so we take a moment to take a knee. We take both knees right now. And we call on your name, Jesus. And we begin to go forth in prayer. And we ask you now to have your way in the earth. Have your way in our lives. God, have your way in our communities. God, have your way in our society. God, because we need you. We need you like never before. And God, we plead your blood right now. I said we plead your blood right now in the name of Jesus. God, your blood that covers, your blood that protects and shields us. We need your blood right now because there's still power in your blood. And we cast it now to cover us now in the mighty name of Jesus. We cast down every imagination. We cast down every ruler of darkness and evil that rules in high places. We call them down now in the name of Jesus. And God, we ask you now to intervene in a way that you've never intervened before. God, we want to see your glory revealed even in this. God, even in racism, reveal your glory. Even in social injustice, reveal your glory. Even in police brutality, God, reveal your glory. In the mighty name of Jesus, we know that you're still sovereign. We know that you still reign. We know that you still sit on the throne. So we call on your name right now. In the mighty name of Jesus, to have your way in the earth. Come on, God, and intervene for us. Intervene on our behalf. And God, come on in and make change happen. In the name of Jesus, thank you for calling us back to a place of prayer. Thank you for calling us back to a place of intercession. God, we take now a knee and we go back to a place of prayer. Call us back to a posture of prayer. Don't let us get up until we see change. Don't let us get up until we feel change. God, don't let us get up until our government systems change. Don't let us get up until politics make a difference in our communities. In the mighty name of Jesus. God, we need you. God, we need you. I say, God, we need you like we never needed you before. God, you got to do something. God, we pray against anxiety now. In the name of Jesus, we come against depression now. In the name of Jesus, we come against panic attacks now. In the name of Jesus, we call it on your name, God, because only you have the power. And you've given that power and that authority to us to call those things that be not as though they were. So we ask you right now to erase it from our minds, God. In the name of Jesus, God, give us a spirit of peace. That peace that your world talks about. That peace that surpasses all understanding. We need peace in the world today. God, we need peace in the world today. We need peace in our communities today. God, we pray now that you will anoint our elected officials. God, we ask that you will anoint those that sit in high places in the earth. God, we pray now a special anointing upon them. In the mighty name of Jesus. 
that you will begin to do a work in them that will cause change in our communities, that will cause change in our societies. God, we pray now that you will begin to do a work in them, that the laws will change, that your spiritualities will change in the name of Jesus. God, procedures have to change. And so we pray now for people in high places to begin to open their eyes and begin to open their minds to new ideas and new insights. Anoint your church to be ready for the next move of God. I said, anoint your church to be ready for the next move of God. God, make us ready for what you want to do. God, make us ready for how you want to move. God, make us ready for your glory. We need your glory, God. We need your glory. Come on, somebody shout your glory. Come on, somebody shout your glory. We need your glory. We need your glory. In the name of Jesus, God, do it for us. Anoint us afresh to be able to handle what it is you want us to do in this next season. God, I pray that we will open the doors of the church again. Don't let us come back the same way we left. God, I pray right now that you will send a fresh anointing. Even now, in the name of Jesus, the kind that only you can do. The anointing that destroys yokes. Send that kind of anointing, God. The anointing that shall lift every feather. In the name of Jesus, the anointing that will cause us to worship you like we've never worshipped you before. In the name of Jesus. And we thank you for your glory. We thank you for your anointing. We thank you for your power. We thank you for your strength. In the mighty name of Jesus. Come on, somebody shout in Jesus' name. Come on, somebody shout in Jesus' name. Come on, clap those hands and shout in Jesus' name. Come on, clap those hands and shout in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen, amen. Now, come on, somebody release a praise right here. Open your mouth and give God a shout of praise. Come on, a shout of praise out here. Come on, let me hear you. Hallelujah. 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 And the Bible and scripture ended in it saying, Hallelujah. And the peace of God which surpasses all understanding. You're going to wonder why you're so peaceful sitting at home when everything around you is going crazy. Somebody shout, it's the peace of God. Come on, say, it's the peace of God. It will guard our hearts and our minds through Christ Jesus. Come on, can we put our hands together and celebrate the word of God? Come on. Come on, this is this is what we're here for. Come on, celebrate the word of God. Come on, tell somebody beside you in the car beside him. Tell him, take a knee. Come on, tell him, take a knee. Come on, find your posture of prayer. Take a knee. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, everybody. Can we celebrate the word of God on today? We're so eternally grateful for the word of God. I want to thank my son in the gospel. Amen. Elder Travis Moran for going before the Lord and getting on his knees <laughs> that God might speak to him and tell us what to do. And in this hour, God is calling his church back to a posture of prayer. He's calling us back on our knees because it takes prayer together with protest. Prayer, protest, and politics. All of it mixed together. And prayer will help turn it around. So I want to celebrate the word of God. Thank those. Amen. Truth Tabernacle by Facebook Live on today. We invite you to give at this time all over everywhere. We invite you to give. Amen. There are multiple ways which you can give. We tell you to stop right now and give. Stop right now and give. Stop right now and give. I often say if you don't stop now, you might not stop. The ways you can give, you can give by Ghiblify. Amen. Just hit that app, find Truth Tabernacle Ministries and give. You can text to give. We do cash app, dollar sign, truth tab, 
dollar sign truth tab. Those of you in the parking lot, you can write those checks right now, amen, and you're going to deposit it, amen, in the mailbox all over the building. We want you to get those gifts, get those gifts, get those gifts as we give on this evening. Thank you for joining us, and may God bless you real good, amen. Thank you, Facebook audience, and thank you, those of you that are giving in this time. Listen, we want to invite you to join us on Wednesday night. We got a special, special session on Wednesday night as our co-pastor will meet us on Facebook Live on Wednesday night. And they're going to be looking at the issues, amen, that are in this world from a biblical perspective. So join co-pastor one to freeze your park on Wednesday nights. Then on next Sunday morning, we invite you to join us as we go in, amen, to the sanctuary to worship together. Amen. Our first worship in the sanctuary, instituting social distancing, amen, and um, doing all the proper things, amen, that we will be safe as we worship together. Again, thank you so much. Those of you that are given, amen, that are given in whatever way, we want to thank you for your giving on today in Jesus' name. God bless you.